My male nearly adult, older brother, 26, passed away three weeks ago. It was devastating for the entire family, though he was low contact with us for disagreements. His girlfriend was devastated the most. She didn't eat or take a shower for an entire week. My parents took her in last week because she could no longer afford the rent for the apartment she shared with my brother. Here's the situation. I think this took place a month ago. Brother confided in me his problems with his girlfriend and said he planned to break up with her next month. I thought that was too much for his girlfriend since she'd always been the one to try to work things out, but my brother had issues with their relationship. Seeing his girlfriend depressed to the point of losing weight and hearing her break down crying multiple times a day, I decided to sit down and tell her what my brother was planning on doing. I didn't just dish it out on her. I just told her what he told me, but she reacted in a very negative way. She had a breakdown, crying and screaming at me. My parents came rushing, asking what was happening, and I told them after my brother's girlfriend rushed upstairs. My parents scolded me, saying I should never have said this to her, seeing how bereaved and struggling she was. I explained that I felt bad for her and didn't think it was fair for me to hide this important truth from her. They told me I had no right and this was not good timing and also said that I just made it worse and tainted my brother's memory for her and confused her even more. I got punished harshly, but my friends agreed I did the right thing since my brother's girlfriend's situation is just tragic and she needed this piece of info and I was right and considerate to give it to her. I really think I just let her know this because I felt guilty for hiding the truth from her, but I might be the idiot for what I did. Don't cry. I know your boyfriend just died, but he was going to leave you anyway. So you don't have to be sad because you're alone regardless. Empathy 100. You are the idiot, OP. What good is that information to her? It was only going to hurt her more. She has a right to mourn for him. They were still together. I thought it would be OP telling his brother he wanted to propose or something. The second I read it was about a breakup. I was shocked at how insensitive that is. OP sounds cold and heartless, like, don't cry, my brother was going to break up with you anyway. Why was she so mad? I was telling her what my brother said. OP was lucky they didn't get smacked. Whoa, you truly did that to her because you wanted to relieve yourself from guilt and blame? You are the idiot. I can't imagine how horrible that made her feel. And to be honest, you don't know if he was just complaining to you or if he had really planned to do it. You were not hiding the truth from her, and telling her this was probably the cruelest thing you could have done to her. The friends who agree with you are also idiots. You two have zero emotional intelligence. I think it's no idiots here. I think OP's probably young and dumb and didn't intend to be malicious. He's grieving his brother too. He probably thought, hey, maybe if I tell her my brother wasn't good for her, and their relationship was doomed, she'll stop grieving and get over it. Obviously, he miscalculated, and he should have seen that coming, but he's only 17, and it doesn't sound like he was trying to hurt her in the post. I think OP's just immature and inexperienced. He's just a kid. Not the idiot. I understand your thinking here. Girlfriend is wasting away with grief over a man who planned to ditch her after Christmas. She feels confused and angry for being so grief-struck, over what she thought she lost, but it will help her get over her grief and move forward now that she knows they had no future together and he'd already checked out of the relationship. Literally, she will be able to process her grief as a breakup rather than fantasizing about a future that would have never happened anyway. Your parents are upset with you because your brother will no longer be the angel in his girlfriend's eyes and your parents need him to be loved and missed because they've lost their child forever. In the short run, let alone the long run, you've done his girlfriend a huge service. My parents became vegetarian when I was nine, then subsequently vegan two years later. My little sister is four years younger. It's a life philosophy thing for them. Of course, we also had our own little fruit and vegetable garden for personal use. Solar panels, wear secondhand clothing, the whole shebang. I must say I do not mind vegan food, but what bothered me growing up was that my parents wanted us, me and my sister, to be vegan. I really didn't mind it in the sense that it made me feel like the odd one out. As a teen, it was an issue when I was just going out with friends or even at parties or sleepovers 
my parents would pack me special food that just made me feel like I was being complicated and weird. This led to the situation where I basically did go eat burgers and such with friends and blatantly lied about it to my parents to keep the peace. My grandma knew that I wasn't super strict with it and would sometimes also give me treats, but at some point this was found out and my parents made a scene about it. Anyway, my sister is now a teenager and much in the same situation as me. She wants to eat meat on occasion, especially with friends. Also with lockdown, she was basically just forced to eat my parents' food 24-7 for over a year, though she managed to get a few things in. I'm a student and return home for weekends and holidays, but I had more freedom all in all. I also work part-time. So anyway, lockdown measures are getting milder here and restaurants opened recently. So my sister asked if we could go. I've just finished my exams and her school year is also heading to an end. So I made it a bit of a celebratory dinner for us two. And yeah, she asked to have like a mixed grilled meat dish. And obviously I obliged because I knew what it's like to be a teen under my parents' roof. Long story short, my parents found out and now they're angry. Extra info, they know I'm no longer vegan but disapprove. They feel sister should be vegan until 18. I disagree that sister needs to wait until she's 18. I think she's old enough to know what she wants to eat, certainly if it's inside the house. We do not bring meat into the house. They still do financially support me for my studies, but I pay for the meal with the money for my job. Am I the idiot for buying her a meat dish on her request? Not the idiot. They have no right to control what you and your sister eat and don't eat. Sure, they can educate you on veganism and whatnot, but they can't force you or demand that you follow in their footsteps. You have to want to do it. It's often so weird. I see vegans trying to force others to eat the way they do permanently, but if someone suggests thinking about how they would feel in that situation, it's suddenly super disrespectful. I'm a vegetarian, and people have tried for years to make me eat meat, so I can't understand how people who definitely know that feeling can just do the same. Not the idiot. Your sister's old enough to make choices of what to eat. Your parents can't force either of you to become vegan. If they wanted you two to be vegan, what they should have done is convince you instead of forcing you. They should have expected that forcing you would make you want to eat meat even more. I'm also concerned that they force their children to abide by a vegetarian and vegan diet practically all their lives. They were vegetarians before coming vegan, according to OP. It's great to want to be eco-friendly and progressive, but kids need a fully balanced diet while growing up. Many studies find that there are several medical downsides for children who were strictly on vegan and or vegetarian diets. We bought our new house last year. We noticed bikes and children's toys in the driveway and on the side yard when we first viewed the house. Before we signed the final documents and got the keys at our final walkthrough, we noticed kids in the driveway coloring with sidewalk chalk and riding scooters and bikes. We introduced ourselves to the kids and asked where they lived. They pointed at the house next door. After the walkthrough, my SO and I went to the house the kids pointed out, introduced ourselves to the parents, and let them know we were buying the house and moving in. We also mentioned that it was not safe to have the kids in the driveway, with the trucks coming in and us moving things in and out. All was fine when we moved in, the kids didn't play in the driveway, but they were still leaving toys and digging in the side yard. So we went over and asked the neighbors to please have the kids clean up the toys and stop digging in the yard. The mother said that Mr. and Mrs. X, previous owners, always let the kids try and search for fossils in the yard and laughed. We said that we were not Mr. and Mrs. X and didn't want the kids digging or playing in our yard. Then they started up with the bikes in the driveway again. We had cameras facing the front of the house and saw that they would ride in the driveway in the yard and they were also starting to draw again with the chalk. We went over to the neighbor's house and let them know that we did not want the kids playing in our driveway, our yard, or drawing on it with chalk. The neighbor again said that Mr. and Mrs. X always let them do it. And again, we explained that we were not Mr. and Mrs. X and we did not want them to do this. We also followed this up with a letter to the neighbors and informed them that the kids were not allowed to play, dig, or draw on our property and sent it certified mail. Fast forward to Sunday. 
Maestro was in the house and I'm cutting wood for some projects in the garage. I pulled my truck out of the garage so I could work. About 20 minutes in, I heard the neighbor's kid laughing in the driveway. So I went out to see what they were doing. They were riding bikes on the driveway. I told them to please not ride their bikes on the driveway and go home. Not five minutes after I said that, I heard the kids again and then heard a scream. One of the kids rode his bike straight into the truck. The neighbor came out screaming at me, accusing me of causing this. The other kid told her that it wasn't true and that kid rode right into the car. My SO came out to see what the commotion was about and the neighbor started screaming at SO that he would regret this. Last night, the father came to our house and said that we are responsible for the medical bills from kid getting hurt. I told him we were not responsible and that his kids should not have even been in our yard. Am I the idiot for not paying the medical bills? Not the idiot, but you mentioned having cameras. Hopefully you kept that recording showing everything. If you do, I'd consider calling the non-emergency phone number for the police and ask them to come by. Tell them about the verbal threat. Show them the recording. Copy the certified letter and ask him to make a report to document that they continue to trespass, etc. They won't have a leg to stand on. I wouldn't call it an accident. The kids were willfully trespassing under instruction from their parents and have caused damage to your property. That being said, good fences make good neighbors. Have you considered fencing in your yard to keep the kids out? Not the idiot. The neighbors don't know y'all, yet they continue to let their kids play in your yard because the previous owner allowed them to? I'm sorry, but that was asking for trouble. And now they got it. Y'all asked them and then told them their kids weren't welcome and they didn't listen. So now that they face the consequences of their actions, they're upset. Everyone's the idiot here. You're an idiot for not letting the kids play on your drive. Although well within your rights, our whole neighborhood played in each other's gardens and it helped form our communities. Still, you are absolutely not the idiot for refusing to pay their bills. That was their fault. And as long as you have warned them either not to play on the drive, which you did, or you let them play on the drive but warn the parents it's at their own risk, then it's their problem. Update. Am I the idiot for not paying for my neighbor's child's medical bills? My SO and I have read every comment and decided to get proactive. We viewed the camera footage from the day of the accident, and it does show me on camera telling the kids to go home and not play on the driveway. It does show the kid riding the bike on the driveway, but unfortunately, the way the truck was parked, it did not pick up the kid riding into it. It picked up the sound, but no video. It did, however, pick up the other kid, telling the mom that the kid rode into the truck. SO called our homeowner's insurance company and informed them of the accident. The agent we deal with asked us to send him copies of the certified letter slash receipt and the video of the incident. He says that as far as our insurance is concerned, they will fight it if they do call and try to claim. He too suggested that we go to the police, so we went there this afternoon. We took copies of the letter and video and showed them to the officer who took the report. He said that the neighbors had been fairly warned that they were not welcome on our property and asked if we wanted them trespassed. We said yes. The officer said that another patrol officer would go there this afternoon and speak with the family and let them know that they have trespassed on our property. After the police left, the father went on a profanity-laced tirade in the yard, calling myself and my SO some very choice names. Again, while there's no video, it is recorded by the camera. We will be getting new cameras that show that portion of the driveway. I'm a father of two, my son and my daughter. At the beginning of the year, my daughter was in an accident and broke her back and she spent several months in rehab, relearning basic tasks and strengthening her arms to do ADLs independently from a wheelchair. During this whole process, my wife and I have been nothing but supportive, visiting her every day and doing everything we can to give her the best chance at recovery. Unfortunately, this has left us with less time to support our younger son. He understands why most of our attention is currently with our daughter and both children have been in therapy since our daughter was injured. So two weeks ago, our daughter finally came home and it's definitely a bit of an adjustment for everyone to make sure she's still getting the care she needs. Our children had to switch bedrooms as her bedroom was previously upstairs 
and there have been several other changes around the house. My son has been a trooper throughout, never complaining about the room change or anything else. A week ago, he approached me and asked me if we could go hiking this weekend. We used to go on hikes as a family every Father's Day weekend, but obviously this year, we wouldn't be able to do that. I told him we could go, assuming my wife would be fine with it, considering how the past few months have been entirely focused on our daughter, so it's only fair that my son gets one day to do something he enjoys. I mentioned this to my wife, and she agrees to stay home with our daughter. So the weekend comes around, and yesterday I took my son on an eight-mile hike at a nearby state park. We had a great time, and there are no issues until we get back to the car. Then I get a call from my wife, who informs me that our daughter's in tears and that I need to get home now. My original plan was to go to dinner with my son after we finished the hike, but instead we headed straight home. As it turns out, my daughter was upset that we would do a family tradition without her. I tried to explain that we weren't trying to exclude her. I was just trying to spend some time with her brother as he hasn't gotten much to himself lately. She didn't take this well and called both my wife and me hateful losers. We understand that she's still adjusting, so we let her know that she wouldn't be in trouble, but she still hasn't backed down. We originally planned to do a family brunch for Father's Day, but she's refused to participate. I do see why she's upset, and I understand that she's going through a lot, but I think she's overreacting and doesn't yet understand how it's been hard on her brother too. So, am I the idiot? No idiots here. Your daughter's still recovering from this trauma and is adjusting to her new life. And part of that adjustment is realizing that you can't do everything you used to do. My best friend had a similar accident a few years ago, and she had similar reactions to your daughter when she first got home. It's just a coping mechanism, and it will likely pass. So, I don't think she's the idiot. Your son deserves a long time and attention, so I don't think you're the idiot for doing something he wants to do, since, as you said, he has been a trooper and really accommodating. I hope your daughter continues to have a healthy recovery. I was entirely in the no one's the idiot territory here until I read that you took your son on a previously full family activity on Father's Day weekend without telling your daughter. Come on, man. Come on. Yes, you and your wife should absolutely be spending one-on-one -on -one time with your boy. But to deliberately lie to your poor girl, that's what you did. You lied by omission, knowing full well how desperate and helpless she would feel when she found out. Come on! That part was hateful. It was hurtful and inconsiderate. Don't punish her for her mouth. Instead, humbly ask for her forgiveness for not talking with you about it beforehand. And then start planning how you're going to include her once she's healed enough to be out and about. She needs to know that she's still part of the family and she hasn't completely lost something she loved. There are trails geared toward people with disabilities and adaptive chairs for hiking more challenging areas. Check them out. Thank goodness someone said it. Focusing on doing a fun family tradition, but with only one kid, only on Father's Day, is like saying, I enjoy being a dad to this child. If you absolutely have to do something with only one kid, then try to at least schedule some fun one-on-one -on -one time with the other.